So I have a lot of people always asking me about my sponsors, not just the ones that I have now, but the ones in the past that I've had along the way. And I think a lot of people get surprised hearing some of them. For example, I actually used to get boards from Enjoy. I used to get boards from Santa Cruz. And I've also had a bunch of crazy sponsors too. You know, I used to have an ice cream sponsor for a few years. I have a furniture sponsor, things like that. So I thought it'd be fun to make a little video about it, talk about all my sponsors from the beginning up until now. Maybe not all of my sponsors, but all the major ones. And there's actually Actually a lot of fun surprises within that. For example, I actually was supposed to go pro for a different board company than the one that I ended up going pro for. So technically, if you want to go way back, my first sponsor was actually my dad's friend's plumbing company. Before YouTube or anything like that, I used to borrow my parents' camera, make skate video edits on my computer, burn them to little CDs and give them to my friends. So I think my dad's friend who has a plumbing company paid me like 10 or 20 bucks to put the phone number and the ad right before one of the videos on one of those CDs. So that's technically the first one, but obviously that doesn't count. My first actual sponsor was 808 Skate. They've done so much for me. They were the first company to actually believe in me. They're an amazing skate shop located in Kailua here on Oahu. And yeah, they're still around. They're still going strong. They're still the best skate shop. So I'm very fortunate to have been a part of that for so long. They would always help me out with clothing, boards, which was huge. And I, they were really good boards too. So I was just riding 808 skateboards for a huge portion of my life. So yeah, if you look at a bunch of my old video parts, maybe, you know, 2010, 2011, my Connie always skate park video parts, all of those I'm riding 808 skate boards. Later on, I found out my friends working in the shop would tell me that people would come in from all over the world on vacation and they'd come to 808 skate and be like, oh, I'm here from this part of the world. I'm here from this part of the world. I need to get that skateboard that Jason was riding in the Connie OA skate park video, which is really cool. You know, it made me super happy because I've always just done stupid tricks and I've always been teased for my skating since I started just clowned on for doing kind of joke tricks or silly tricks so to actually have people that were pumped on the stupid things that I was doing was really cool. And uh, you know, I never imagined it would be like that. So after that, I don't know if you remember the slap one in a million contest they used to have, but it was from Slap Magazine and they would have people submit little one minute edits of their skating. They take the best ones, they'd fly the top 10 of them out to I think San Francisco or something like that. And it was really cool. It gave all these skaters from all over the place a chance to be seen. So I submitted a one minute edit one year and you know, of course I didn't make it to the top 10 or anything and I was like okay whatever but I actually got an email around a week later and it was one of the people running it saying hey we know you didn't make the top 10 but somebody over at enjoy actually saw your entry and they want to send you boards it might have been James Craig over at dwindle but either way yeah they gave me his email I got hooked up with him and that was a dream come true because to me enjoy was and still is in my opinion the greatest skate company of all time what I've always loved about them is they just represent fun the fun in skating the fun that skating should be about and sometimes people forget about that but yeah to be getting boards from literally my favorite skate company in history was a dream I couldn't believe it so that was a very very good time in my life I filmed a bunch of footage on enjoy boards wearing their clothing and that whole thing lasted maybe a year or so maybe like a year and a half I can't really remember and shortly after that I started getting thieve trucks and thieve at that time was a new company they came out swinging they had really good trucks and I think at the time Tony Hawk was one of their main team riders when they first came out I forget how it happened I think I just reached out and I sent them a sponsor me video and they were down I was riding thief trucks for over 10 years of my life and I actually went on to have pro trucks with them which I still can't believe that happened but we'll talk about that a little bit later so at this point I had a couple more opportunities in skating come up for me but they all required me to be in California in LA where you know the industry is located so I worked I saved up money for a couple years here in Hawaii and and I ended up moving to LA to pursue skating, not necessarily thinking I would make it pro, but just to be closer to that culture, you know, to be able to skate all these famous spots that I've dreamt of skating my entire life. You know, I met a lot of my favorite skaters out there just to experience something different after being in Hawaii my entire life. Unfortunately, the whole enjoy skateboards thing slowly fizzled out. And when that happened, uh, my friends over at 808 Skate helped me get a connection to Santa Cruz. So when I moved to LA, I was actually getting flowed Santa Cruz board 
boards for a long time. And I actually liked their boards a lot. They were really good. It was just a flow thing though. I had no connection to the actual company, but it was still great, you know, to be getting free boards. Very, very grateful for that point in my life as well. And I think around the time where I first moved to LA, there was an S game of skate really close to where I was living. And I had always grown up watching the S game to skate. I loved S, they were my favorite shoe company. I had so many pairs of the Excels. And if you remember, S actually went out of business. And when I moved to LA, that's around the time where they came back. So I went to the S game of skate and I somehow ended up winning. And through that, I started getting flowed S shoes, which again was a dream opportunity for me. They were always the coolest shoe company to me. I was so happy. Opportunities like this, I never would have dreamed of. So around that time, I was just street skating, filming, came out with my Thrasher part. And a little after that, I met Andy Schrock. It was through my friend, Brett Novak. One day, Brett's like, hey, like, you wanna go skate? And uh, we're going to skate. And he said, oh, my friends, Andy and Richie are coming. Andy Schrock and Richie Jackson. Of course, I knew who Richie Jackson was. I love and now and all his older video parts. Grew up watching his skating and loving it. Andy, I had no idea who he was. I didn't really watch YouTube skaters or that sort of thing. So, you know, I just was like, okay, cool, I'll meet your friend. Meeting Richie was cool. He's, to this day, one of my very close friends all of these years later. I talked to him all the time, amazing human. And Andy, yeah, I had no idea who he was, but he was just super nice, very nice person. I think we filmed a YouTube video for his channel and we stayed in touch. I think shortly after that, Andy asked me if I wanted to ride for his wheel company, Force Wheels. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll ride for Force Wheels. I think he was just starting it up. It was a new company. So that's when I got on Force Wheels and that's a company that I ride for to this day. And then shortly after that, I got on Juju Bearings, which was a new bearing company. They were amazing, okay? Those, they were actually really, really high quality bearings. I love them. And the team was awesome. On the team with me was Richie Jackson, John Benton, amazing skater, William Spencer, who I grew up idolizing, loving his video parts, his creativity and his approach to skating. And Orange Man was on the team from Fancy Lad. I love his stuff. So by the way, all these people, I'm still close friends with to this day and I'm very fortunate for that. So yeah, Juju Bearings was amazing and I had a great time riding for them. We filmed a video together of all like me, Richie, William and Orange Man and I think that's on my YouTube channel. I just search like the Juju Bearings video and Juju ended up giving me a pro bearing which was amazing. I got to help design it. It was actually an incredibly good bearing and uh, yeah, I loved it. That was so crazy to me. Although actually I wasn't pro yet. Also, this is a little bit ahead. I totally forgot about this so after Santa Cruz my friend Tim well he wasn't my friend at the time but this guy Tim Olson who again I grew up loving his skate videos he would make really fun videos with his friend Eric called Tim and Eric yeah their videos are incredible iconic huge inspiration to me but Tim started up his own board company called the friendship and I believe he reached out to me to be one of the first team riders and I was super down because I wanted to be a part of something from the beginning like that he was one of my biggest influences in skating and not only that but you know I I was flow for Santa Cruz and in my mind I was like okay I'll just be like this flow rider forever which is great or I can be a part of this company where I'll be a team rider one of the main team riders so of course I said yes to the friendship I started getting boards from them and that was actually my Thrasher part it was supposed to be called friendship which is the company name but Thrasher just called it friend my friendship part so I guess that was a little confused but yeah and I wrote for friendship for I don't know, maybe a year or two. And at a certain point, they wanted to turn me pro. They wanted me to be the first pro for their company. And I was super excited about it. Going pro, you know, again, was never something I expected. It wasn't even really one of my dreams. But yeah, basically I was super excited. They started sending me graphics for my pro graphic and none of them were really exactly what I wanted. So we were in the talks going back and forth about that. As far as my dreams in skating, I had two dreams my entire life. One was to get a video part in 411 video magazine and unfortunately 411 went out of business so I was unable to do that. The second dream was to film a part with the O'Shea brothers. They filmed the Happy Medium videos. Happy Medium 1 was a video I just obsessed over. It was the greatest video when I was younger. Then Happy Medium 2 came out and to this day this is my favorite skate video of all time. I'm totally convinced it's the best film skate video in history. So yeah when I moved to LA they were premiering a Happy Medium 3 in Arizona and I was so excited because you know living in Hawaii I could never go to video Video premieres so I got together with a bunch of my friends even Richie came on the trip with us we road trip to Arizona and we went to the video premiere at the video premiere I met Hunter O'Shea and uh, I told him you know I'm a huge fan of your videos I love your work I always have and he actually was a fan of me so we kind of just fanned out upon each other it was a great moment a couple weeks later they want to come to LA and film and I was in touch with
touch with them. So they actually came and stayed with us where I was living at the time and I started filming with them. And that was like the ultimate dream for me. I was like, oh, even to get like a clip in one of your videos would be the greatest point of my life. And I'll always remember the first clip we got together. It was at night in LA. We just left the apartment. We went skating around downtown and it was a no comply front side heel flip on a bank. The first clip we got together, I was so pumped. And after that, they asked me to come out to Arizona to film with them. So of course I did. I went out to Arizona for like two months and we filmed all the time. It was one of the best times I've ever had filming in my entire life. And while we were filming, they told me they were gonna start a board company. I think Buster and John Mata were starting a board company called Sometimes Skateboards. And they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. They were filming a full length video. I could have a part in their video. And I felt terrible because, you know, I really wanted to be a part of friendship and keep going with that. But at the same time, my life goal was to have a video part with Buster and Hunter. So it was a huge decision. I thought about it a lot, but I just ended up having to go and follow my dream of getting a video part with them. Them. So I talked to Tim, I left friendship. He was sad, but he understood. And I went to sometimes and I put in my all, I filmed the sometimes video video part with them, which to me is one of the most proud I've ever been of a video part in my entire life. And at the video premiere, they turned me pro. So that is actually when I went pro was at the sometimes video premiere. My family came out, they were there for it. Just one of the best nights of my entire life, honestly. Even just aside from going pro, seeing the video premiere, being in a video with some of my heroes, you know, John. Mata, John Robb, Jeff Stevens. Oh, it was just an unreal night. One of the happiest times of my entire life. So as soon as I went pro for some times, I also got a pro wheel for force, which they let me design. It was like a cat playing with yarn because I love cats. And I got a pro truck with Thieve, which was insane. And I never thought that would happen, but I got a pro truck with them. Oh, I love that truck so much. It was just, oh, I rode it so many times. So pretty soon after I went pro, I actually think I tore my ACL and I had knee surgery, so I couldn't skate for a while. Also, sometimes skateboards ended up going out of business because it was a great thing. We had a lot of people supporting it. It was so cool, but it's just really hard to start your own board company. So unfortunately it didn't work out. And in the meantime, Buster hooked me up with Rip and Dip. He knew the guy that owns Rip and Dip. So I was getting flowed Rip and Dip boards for a while. And that was cool. But at the same time, I knew I didn't want to be there for a long time. I mean, you know, they're a huge company, but that's not really the type of company I wanted to be a part of or fully supporting. So while I was in this stage of kind of figuring out my life, I heard Andy was starting up a new company called three block and you know i thought about writing for revive but he had started up this new company three block the team writers were so talented you know like gage smith who i'd actually known since the element make it count finals in 2011 i met him there because we were both the winners of our individual states yeah people like that it was a new company it was something that i wanted to be a part of from the beginning and help build so i asked andy if i could be on three block and he was telling me all right are you sure you don't want to be on revive you know it's like a small thing and uh yeah i didn't care about anything else at the time i was I was like, yeah, I would love to be a part of this and try and help grow it. So I got on three block and I rode for them for a long time and it was fun. You know, I had a lot of input on the graphics. I got to put out some of my favorite board graphics I've ever put out. I also helped design a board that ended up being the reason that I'm married to Nana, but I will talk about that in a separate video. That is a crazy story. So yeah, I rode for three block for a while, I think like a couple of years. And then once I realized that Nana and I were going to get married, we decided that that was going to happen. I I thought, okay, I need to figure something else out because three block was really small. You know, I was making pretty much almost no money from skating. And I was just thinking, you know, I want to have a successful marriage. I want to be a actual husband. So I, that's at the point where I started up YouTube again. It was Nana's idea to start up YouTube, which I'd always loved making YouTube videos. I just put it on the back burner. So started making YouTube videos again. And at the same time asked Andy if I could switch over to Revive because I just have been friends with them at that point for a really long time. You know, Andy, Sam, Brian, even people like John Hill, Johnny Geiger. I was just friends with them at this point. So it made sense. So Andy, kind human, he was down. I got on Revive and that's where I am to this day on Revive and Force still. I'm also still getting shoes from S, which is seriously a dream because they've literally been my favorite skate shoes since I started skating and they're still my favorite skate shoes today. So to be riding for them is unbelievable. Juju Bearings, unfortunately, isn't still around, but I'm getting 
having bearings from Bones, which I love Bones bearings. They're incredible. They're the bearings that I would ride, again, when I was younger. I would get reds at the skate shop all the time. And I also ride for FP insoles right now because I just decided to try them one day, swapped out the insoles with FPs because I was gonna jump down some stairs. I, I loved it, it made a huge difference. So I just talked to them and now I'm riding for FP. So that's where I'm at today with my sponsors, but I also wanted to talk about some of my coolest sponsors I've had throughout the years, not just skating related. I've had a bunch of random sponsors, but I wanna talk about some of my favorite ones. For example, Halo Top. I rode for them for multiple years and they make ice cream and I love ice cream. So to get an ice cream sponsor, which was sending me huge packages, tubs of ice cream, it was unbelievable. That was a dream. I love their ice cream too, it was really good. Also, I one of my sponsors was Terra Chips. I was always getting their chips and I love them, me and Nana love them. So I just hit them up one day and they were down for a sponsorship and their chips are amazing. Oh, I also forgot. I currently also ride for Avenir Hardware, which is they make really cool colorful nuts and bolts, which I always have loved, colorful hardware. So to have a sponsor that does that is really, really awesome. Keen Ramps is a company that I've worked with and they make the best mini ramps. They make the best quarter pipes. During quarantine, when the whole pandemic was happening, they sent me a box and a quarter pipe and I was staying at my parents' house and we couldn't go to the skate parks. So I skated that in front of my house every day for a very long time and it just saved me. It saved my sanity and they're still super fun. They built the mini ramp in my backyard. They're just an incredible, incredible company and I'm so grateful to have been a part of anything that they've been doing. I have a furniture sponsor, Value Furniture here in Hawaii. Our bed is from them. Our sofa is from them. It's just funny that I have a furniture sponsor. Boba, Rabbit Rabbit. They make, in my opinion, the greatest drink in the world. It's a Japanese buckwheat milk tea that Nana and I would always get. We were obsessed with it to the point where we were going to get it maybe like three times a week. And I thought, this is kind of crazy. Like sometimes it'd be up to four or five times a week. So I just contacted their company, got in touch with the owner and worked out a deal. Their Japanese buckwheat milk tea is amazing. I get it with 0% sweetness, half ice. It's my favorite drink in the entire world. And I've had a bunch of clothing sponsors over the years, but the one I currently ride for, which is really awesome, is Kahala. They're an iconic Aloha shirt company here in Hawaii. They've been around for so long, and I've always loved Aloha shirts, and it's just cool. I also want to say none of this is, you know, paid for. This video is not paid for by any sponsors. I'm just giving like my honest opinions on everything. So I don't mean for this to come off as like an advertisement or something. I hope it does not come off that way. But speaking of advertisements, I actually do make my own clothing. Also, I'm wearing one here. This is the whale shark shirt. I designed them all, which is why they're all stupid. Um, they're on my website, jasonparksocks.com. If you want to get yourself some stupid shirts. But yeah, that's it for this video. Wow, that went on for a long time. So if you actually made it here to the end, thank you for watching. And I hope you guys learned something because learning is fun and knowledge is power. And if there's any other topics that you want me to talk about for an upcoming video, let me know in the comments. And uh, I would love to talk about any and everything in my life. I am a very transparent human. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.